You've got it tuned to KEXP. We're listener-powered radio at 90.3 FM in Seattle, online around the world at kexp.org. I'm Cheryl Waters. I am so, so happy to have this band live in studio today. The War on Drugs here with us. Thank Welcome. you, Cheryl. Thank yeah. you, Cheryl. Uh, someone saw me in the hall a little while ago and I was shaking and they said, are you nervous? And I said, hell no, I'm just so excited. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're so happy to have you here. Why don't you start off with a couple of songs and then we'll catch up. Cool. We're going to we're going to play uh, an ocean in between the waves.
it. Woo! The War on Drugs live on KEXP. I, I'm so, so grateful that you played that song. Every time I listen to that on record and now hearing it live, I almost burst out into tears and I don't even know what o emotions are overcoming me. I mean, that is an incredible song. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you so much for making it. We're just it happy to be out of a van. And playing it. That I'm so beside myself right now. It's such a great album. Well, we always love coming to uh, Seattle. Thank you. And playing for KXP. Well, we always appreciate it. You got another tune for us? If yeah. I can, If I can handle it. This one is called Eyes to the Wind. Should this one be dedicated to the officer or the next one? Let's dedicate this one to Officer Surplus, who uh, apparently pulled over. We have two vans. We have a gear van and a passenger van. And uh, Officer Surplus pulled over the gear van and was kind enough to let them go. And so this song is dedicated to you.
Officer Surplus. Lucky you, Officer Surplus. That gorgeous song just for you. It's the War on Drugs live on KEXP. I've pulled myself together a little bit. And again, welcome and thank you so much for coming by. Thank you, Cheryl. The new album is called Lost in the Dream. Tonight, the War on Drugs play at the Neptune Theater here in Seattle. And Adam, you want to... I can't believe it's sold out. It's crazy that it's sold out. <laughs> you can't believe it's sold out. I can't believe out. it. It's so awesome. I'm surprised it didn't sell out in an hour. So awesome. <laughs> um, Adam, you want to introduce this fine group of musicians? I would love to. On the bass guitar, Dave Hartley, currently wearing a, a mix between a San Antonio Spurs t-shirt and what appears to be a Twilight Zone, something called the Dunk Zone. <laughs> um, on the drums is uh, Charlie Hall out of uh, Philadelphia wearing a beautiful Argyle sweater, diamond pattern. On the keyboards is Robbie Bennett, who, um, who's holding it together pretty well considering we had a rough couple days and Robbie saved our life on numerous occasions. Um, and then on the acoustic guitar, and usually uh, keyboards too, but not today, is uh, Anthony LaMarca out of uh, Brooklyn via Youngstown, Ohio. He's one of our newest and most trusted friends in this uh, journey, through, uh, journey through this crazy country that we tore through. Well, and Julian, Julian is currently um, bringing my amplifier to the repair shop, and he is most definitely a part of this band as well. <laughs> well, welcome to all of you, and it's a great pleasure to have you here always. Thank you. Thank you always for being so generous with your time at KEXB. So people are freaking the F out about the new album, Lost in the Dream. It's not just me. <laughs> and at first, I started to uh, get a little bit defensive because Slave Ambient was one of my favorite albums of 2011. And I was like, what are you guys freaking out about? They've always been great. But you know, the album really does elicit a lot of emotion, uh, obvious from my response here today. And Adam, I know that it was born out of a difficult period in your life, and maybe you put all of that emotion in the record, but do you feel that there's a difference in it? Yeah, definitely. Um, I guess it's, um, I, I guess just personally, I wanted to just try to be a little more uh, disciplined with writing and um, in recording and and um, and wanting to uh, kind of showcase what the live band had become over the years. Like Slave Ambient made us, like it forced us to kind of like tour for a year and a half and uh, become a band. And we were kind of like learning how to play together, um, but also like reinterpreting these songs that weren't really, they weren't solo recordings, but they also weren't really like band recordings. Um, and I really liked how the band kind of changed the way that those songs happened live. So for the record, I kind of wanted to do something that could do that again um, and really play to everyone's strengths in the studio without really maybe making a band record the same way that um, you'd think you'd want to make one. So it was still like the same kind of recording approach, but just kind of with the idea in mind that like I wanted Robbie to play like beautiful piano and Dave to play all the sweet bass, you know, and to bring Charlie in on songs that I thought were right up his alley. And anytime that happened, it always transformed the recording. So. I heard that you had uh, a long time, uh, I heard a year to make this record, writing and recording it. Is that true? Yeah, I started um, all the songs. I started in my home studio between like August or between like June and December of 2012. They were all kind of like sketches or just like kind of pretty, I just have like a one inch 16 track machine at home. So pretty sparse kind of loose structures and then um, pretty much spent the most of 2013 um, or the most part of 2013 overdubbing and stripping away and redoing stuff and was that a luxury I mean have you ever had that much time to work on music <laughs> um, well Slave Ambient took a long time too but it wasn't the only thing I had to do and this time around it was just like this was really kind of the only thing um, it was a luxury um, it was different. It's like this with Slave Ambient too. I realized I couldn't make a record like the way I made that one again, and I don't think I could make one like I made this one. But I think personally, the goal is to just try to get to the point where you can make you can sit in a room with your band and make a record in maybe a few months. You know, live as a band, uh, like all the records that we love so much. But I think it's a um, it's a process trying to get there. I know. 
I have some bands in here sometimes they'll say, you know, we wrote some of the songs before we went into the studio, but then we got in there and we wrote that one in 10 minutes and recorded it in one take and it ended up being our favorite song on the album. And I get the idea that it's maybe more of an intensive process than something like that for you. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes it's just a matter of uh, like exhausting all the possibilities. Um, I mean, all the songs on this record were pretty much built up from all the stuff I started at home. Um, and then we'd build it up and then, you know, take it to the studio and then we'd, you know, um, just kind of, I guess, just build it up as we go. And there wasn't really a moment where we were all together in a room playing a song. Um, some of the songs were written fairly quick, like Eyes to the Wind. I wrote that in my kitchen in like, you know, a few minutes, strangely enough. But the finished recording of that took about a year to kind of get to the, to where like, when I first had the idea, I knew kind of what the song meant to me, or I, I knew like I had a feeling or like a magic about it. And um, I guess the recording process is about trying to like unlock that feeling and also make it sound huge, um, but also try to hold on to whatever like little naivete is in there when you first have that little idea. Do you know when you hear that magic? Because that seems to really be what's going on with people with this album. You've really just hit it on every song. Do you find yourself questioning yourself over and over and changing things all the time? Or do you yeah. just kind of know when you hit but it? But I usually know when, um, when I start the song, like in my house, and I listen to it for days and days in a row, and it's like the only thing I can think of. And it might be really sparse, but I can hear like what the mood is. Like even that first song we played, An Ocean in Between the Waves, that was like, it started off super raw in my house, just like an organ and some guitar and drum machine. But I just knew it had like a, this midnight vibe you know, and we were trying to like kind of chase that for a long time. So how do you keep how do you keep this beautiful little th sound, but also like make it full band arrangements? Because that's what I want. I want like songs that sound like what this band sounds like. You know, I love every song on the album, but you mentioned an ocean between the waves, and the first time I heard that. I got goosebumps and then another layer on top of it and another layer and another layer and I actually thought my adrenals were gonna <laughs> shut down. That song just really keys into oh, something so emotional. And yeah. so thank you again for playing it. Cool. Yeah, you're welcome. The War on Drugs are live here in the KEXP studios, playing tonight at the Neptune Theater in Seattle. Hopefully you're one of the lucky ones to get a ticket to that show. And then you've got a lot of shows. You got quite a tour ahead of you. We do actually. Um, we just drove today from Denver to uh, Seattle. Wow. So, and we had to do that yesterday, pretty much. Um, but yeah, we have all the West Coast, Portland, San Fran, L.A., San Diego. Then over to Europe. Then over to Europe in May. Yeah. Very, very exciting. Very I wish exciting. I could follow you on the road. You can. <laughs> all right. You're hired. Let me, let me run home and pack a bag. <laughs> yeah. No, be, we'd love to have you. The War on Drugs here in the KEXP studios. You got some more songs? Yeah, we should do, do you want to do Red Eyes or do you want to do Suffering first? Anthony has the acoustic. You want to try Red Eyes? Sure. Cool, let's try it. Is there another one we were gonna do them spacing on? Suffering. Cool, we're gonna try this song called Red Eyes. Wait. 
for the best way of your man against him. Yeah, I won't keep you here, but I can't. Cheryl, <laughs> too early to play like that. Ah, uh, you guys sound Unreal. great. The War on Drugs so live on KEXP. Uh, you are too humble. Some guy's sitting in traffic on uh, near Madison Avenue right now. And loving what it. What is this guy doing? He's hitting wrong notes everywhere. Loving every minute of it. This guy sucks. This guy sucks. <laughs> what am I listening to this for? <laughs> How about more of that music that sucks? It's the War on Drugs live on KEXP. Lost in the Dream is the new album. We're yep. going to play uh, Suffering. This one goes out to Joe and Therese. First time we played KEXP, they brought us donuts and coffee. Since then, they've had children. And I'm wearing the same thing I wore five years ago. Keeps continuity in the video. <laughs> Means I can get bigger than the tone. 
beautiful thank you Cheryl it's the war on drugs live on KEXP uh, so so gorgeous you guys I was just thinking when you were playing that the other day I was on the air playing a song off the new album and Kevin Cole our afternoon DJ wandered in saying oh I love this song and we were talking and then Jim here in the video camera wandered in and we were all talking about it and then we all started to play air guitar oh, yeah. and I was like three of us like like dorks standing there playing air guitar volume at 24 and I was so worried someone was gonna walk in That's awesome. and bust us but I bet a lot of folks are inspired like that as well oh, that's wonderful thank you well thank you all so much lost in the dream is the new album obviously you can tell we love it we're not the only one great job guys thanks Cheryl thanks KXP thank you so much thanks and Seattle Got, I want to thank our videographers, Luke and Scott and Jim and Justin, and our engineer, Kevin Suggs, and again, the band. It's The War on Drugs, live on KEXP Seattle.